Hey friends, so if you watched the last lesson, I kind of broke down drum rack and revealed some of the more under the hood features of rack and how amazing it can be for creating drum tracks. Um, in this lesson, I want to talk about whether or not you should be using MIDI or audio to be creating your drum tracks in the first place. Um, so in the first part of this video, I'm going to break down the advantages of using drum rack and MIDI in general to be making drums. And then in the second half, I'll go over the advantages of using audio to be making drums. Hopefully by the end of this video, you can answer your own question as to whether you personally should be using MIDI or audio. I personally use both. So let's go ahead and get into the first part here. I've got a drum rack that I've already made. Sounds like... Okay, so right off the bat, the first advantage for me when using MIDI to make drums, at least to start, is that I can play with my hands the idea that I have in my head, right? Now, I realize that some of you can't play the drums that you have in your head all with your fingers right off the bat. And honestly, neither can I. But what you can do is you can turn on this little guy right here. This is MIDI overdub, okay? And what this will allow you to do is play certain parts of your drums that you have in your head. And then when it comes back around, you can play the next part. I'll show you what I mean. So here we go. Now, as you can see, I've got not only my drums and my little clap sound, but my hi-hats. It all got recorded all at once. It missed that first note there. I'll just put that there. But as you can see, I didn't need to play all that complexity all at once, right? And then the next thing, another advantage is that, you know, we're working with grids. I can just hit Command U. I'm quantized to a 16th, and now I have my drum part. Right. Let's look at this drum rack in more detail. Um, from the last lesson, you saw how you can create return chains and you can do some mixing and you can stack samples using multis and stuff like that. Um, now, in this case, I have a drum rack with these specific samples in them and I already have my drum rack idea laid out, right? Let's just say, for example, that I don't like my, my clap sound. What I can do is, is something that's really fast is you can hot swap with Ableton by, by hitting this little sign right here. And then in hot swap mode, it'll jump into the folder that you were looking in and you can try different sounds out. Another thing that I could do is go into my samples and just hit clap, right? And just find, I could find another sample that I like and just double click on it. And it appears in this track. And now you, you can see that nothing has changed. I still have my clap track right there, right? So let's listen to it now. And I feel like that sample suits this more. So this is another advantage of MIDI. I can just quickly swap my samples out. So another advantage to using MIDI with drums is that you can add changes to your drums over time using LFOs and other kinds of things that you can't necessarily do in the audio realm in the same way. Um, you can automate these changes and they can generate all kinds of different samples for you instead of you having to go in and change them yourself for every single hit. I'll show you what I mean by, I have this little, kind of laser sample, I'm going to add that to a, as a layer underneath of my snare drum. So I could make a multi like I showed you in the last lesson, but in this case, I'm just going to select all the snare tracks, hold option, and click on this. And as I drag up, you can see this little plus sign. If I let go, I've, I've essentially copied all the snare hits, right? So now if I look at this and I listen, I've got the... So I'm going to think of this laser sound as kind of like the the membrane or the body or the top of my snare drum. And what happens in nature when you hit a snare drum is that it changes volume and pitch and all kinds of stuff depending upon where you hit it, right? And as a, when you have a human drummer, they're going to make those kinds of humanized sort of, you know, changes in the sound and it's going to add interest and complexity to your, to your drums. So I'm going to go in here and turn on my LFO. I'm going to make sure re-trigger is turned off because I want these changes to happen over time. Now I could leave it on sign if I wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose sample and hold. I'm also gonna sync it to the clock. And so now for every quarter note, the there's gonna be a different position for this LFO. So if I add tiny changes to the pitch, 
tiny changes to the volume and tiny changes to panning. Every time we hit this, let's listen. You start to hear that move. So now when I play this along with the snare, we're gonna get these changing sounds, right? Now, another thing that I can do, I have all these hi-hats, right? Let's look at these hi-hats. You can also add random panning to every single hit, every single time there's a, there's a drum hit. So if I turn this up to 10 for each one of these hats, they're gonna kind of start swarming around my head, right? So now you can see we've got some movement. Things are moving around and, and, and we're, we're adding this, this change to this, right? So moving on, maybe the, the, one of the biggest arguments I see across the internet is that, hey man, like, yeah, drum rack is all cool and, and whatever, but like, you know, I need to be able to side chain my, my bass with my kick drum so that they're not competing for the low end, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is the bass track that I have. And here's, here's the drums with it. And this is definitely one of those situations where we're going to want to sidechain our kick drum. So what you can do, I'll grab a compressor and I'll drop it in here. Now, I'll kind of get some uh, sidechain-y settings ready. And I'm going to look at the sidechain. Now, if I choose drum rack, of course the sidechain compressor is going to be triggered by every single hit, right? You can see every hit's going through there. What people seem to not understand is that if you click on the second menu under the drum rack, you can choose the kick drum. So this sample is my kick drum. I can choose pre or post fader or post mixer, meaning what's at the end of the drum rack. I'm just going to choose pre. It doesn't matter in this case because I'm just using it as a trigger, right? I'm triggering the, the side chain. So now just like anything else, I can pull this down a little bit. And now our kick drum is a lot, it's got a lot more attack. It sounds a lot more clean. It's just, it's that simple, right? You just choose the drum rack and then choose the slot that you want to use, right? That simple. Okay, so in this next example, I'm going to just select this area of MIDI. This is my drum track, right? I'm going to hit Command D and that's going to duplicate it, okay? In this first one, I'm just going to remove all of my hi-hats, okay? So we just have some differing parts, all right? I'm going to copy everything. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to duplicate everything. So now we have, so now I have kind of some varying parts, all right? So something that I see people say about drum rack is that it's it's all fine and good, but I want to process each one of my drums or each one of my groups of drums separately. Uh, I want to process my hats maybe or all my snare layers or all my kick layers or what have you. So Ableton makes it actually really simple to do this. If you have these differing parts, check this out. So let's say I want to process my snare, my two snare uh, tracks. What I can do is I can just select both of these. These are in, you know, I need to be able to see my chains, right? So I'm looking at my chains, okay? I can select both of these. I'll click one and shift click the other one, right click and say, extract chains. Now watch what happens. Now these chains have magically appeared in their own track. And as you can see, they're doing the same thing they were before and it's removed them from my original drum rack, okay? Pretty awesome stuff. Now let's do the same thing with the hats. So we're gonna go back to this track and I'm gonna select all three of my hat layers. So this one, this one, and this one. Right click, extract chains. Now you can see something that's great about this is look, it even knew where all these tracks were gonna end up, okay? And let's just finally do the, the same thing for the clap. So here's the clap, extract chains, and now we've got all these tracks separated, okay? But the thing is, you have to remember is that we also had a drum bus effect. So what we can do is I'm going to get these other two out of the way. I'm going to select this track, shift click this one. I'm going to drag this down to the bottom. So now all these yellow tracks are together. If I click on the first one, click hold shift, click on the last one, right click group tracks. I now have a drum group. If I click on the first track, I can grab my drum bus and stick it on top of there. So now I have exactly the same thing I had before, but I have separated my kick my snares, my hats, and my clap, okay? So just to prove it, let's go ahead and listen to it. It sounds exactly the same.
This is an extremely streamlined way to get your drums separated so that you can process them separately, right? So real quick, in case you didn't know, I'm also designing Ableton Live online courses. They're really highly organized and optimized so that you can learn stuff really quickly. Um, you can learn anything that you want off YouTube, but a lot of the time the information is kind of bad or it's not laid out in a way that helps you learn uh, efficiently or quickly. My lessons are going to be covering sound design, mixing, composition, songwriting, live performance. Um, so if you like my teaching style and you're interested in that, uh, check out the link uh, here or in the description or in the comments. Uh, and yeah, let's get back to it. Thanks, everybody. So I just undid all that because um, I want to show you one more thing before I move on to audio. Now, let's just focus on this section right here. Okay, so <clears throat> MIDI is awesome for so many reasons. And one of those is that, let's say I feel like this is this groove is kind of bland. Which it kind of is. It's got that kind of choppy kind of robot kind of sound, right? Well. Let's say instead, what I'd like to do is add a groove. So I could go to my grooves and, and browse through these and drag and drop one in there. But I already have this one that I figured out that I like a 16th swing. So now let's listen to the drum part with and without this 16th swing. Now, if I was using the grid and I was dragging samples into Ableton, I'd have to nudge and move samples around until I got my groove established. In this way, I can experiment with different grooves using MIDI until I got the grooves that I like, right? And not only that, these grooves are shared between all of, of the clips in Ableton. So let's say I wanted to add the same thing to the baseline and the wavetable. It'd be just as simple as choosing that groove on each one of these and now everything is snapped to this to this new groove. Definitely gives the song a different feel and I don't know if I would normally swing it this hard. Maybe I would choose something like this or something. Right? It's got a little bit of groove, but it's also, you know, a little bit more straightforward, right? So I just wanted to show you that because I think it's really important. Like grooves can help you design a, a song in a way that isn't so bland and so simple, right? Um, and it's really difficult to do that with audio on the front end, right? So the last thing I want to show you is that within a drum rack or within your extracted uh, chains or however you want to do this, people will say something to the order of, well, hey, man, like I want to pitch a drum around and I don't have my... If the, if the piano roll is totally full of drum samples, I can't pitch each one of those individually. Well, it's actually really simple. If you're using a drum rack, any device inside of it is going to have some kind of pitch control. So in this case, let's look at the snare drum. All right. I'm going to turn off any of this LFO changing of the pitch just so we can hear it for sure. Let's go back and look at the transposition knob. So if I click, if I have my automation viewed, right, you hit A to see that. If I'm looking at my automation and I click on any control, it doesn't matter what it is, watch. Watch right up here. If I click on this, boom. My snare sample, transpose, right? So I can go in here and I can say, all right, here's a, snare, here's a sample. I'm going to pitch that one down, pitch this one up. This one's going to stay the same. This one's going to be really high, so on and so forth. And now we're going to get an automation of the pitch of this sample. Right, it's really that quick, you know? So you can go in here and maybe I want to look at transposition of one of the hats. Click on the sample, click on the transposition knob. Now it says hats transposition. So I can just, you know, however I want to do this, I can, so now I've got kind of a, a, a drastic automation on this hat, let's listen. So you can per sample, per hit, using the grid, put in automations for pitch or really anything else, panning, all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's just as simple as clicking on the control that you want to change and then finding it in your lane. Okay? So now let's move on to audio and look at some of the advantages of using audio instead of MIDI to make your drums. So I'm going to make a new audio track and something that I want to do is add maybe some more layers to my snare drum. Okay, I've already got two going, but maybe I want some more texture on the, on the on the end of it, right? So so here are some samples that we recorded. This is part of the Forest Collection sample, sample pack that we made back in the day. Um, this is a kind of a splat sound. I'm going to click and drag and drop this 
underneath of my snare part. Now, this is really quick. If I just duplicate this and drag it underneath of all my snares, I can just, you know, do my classic thing where I'll select this whole area of time, hold command D, and now for every snare hit we have I'm just gonna turn off these other sounds. So now we have right? But what I want to show you actually is this. Let's just focus on this first little part right here. Now this sample has a lot of material right at the beginning, but what I really like about this sample is at the end, okay? This kind of like, this wind, squishy kind of whatever the hell is happening here, <laughs> right? I like that. So what I want to show you is that if I turn off my automation and I just, I'm looking at this view, uh, without the automation in this area. What I'm doing is I'm looking at kind of my fade view. And if I hover over the audio, I can slide this fade in so that when the snare drum hits, this first little transient isn't gonna be very loud, right? So, see, Wah. right, it softens the attack. So this'll, this'll play nicer with my snare drum. Now I've got this kind of sound. So that's an advantage of audio. You have instant access to these fades. Now you could also go into a drum rack, okay? You could find the sample that you want and you could fade it in here, or let's say you're using classic mode, you could turn the attack up, right? But that's not really what we're talking about here. Like, this is a quick visual way to do that, right? And it's really advantageous. Okay, so moving on, another advantage to audio is, is one-time events that occur in your song. Like, things that aren't going to happen all the time. They're going to happen once or twice, or here or there, or something like that. It's a special effect or something. I, I have this other sample here. <laughs> Another squishy mud sound, right? So I'm going to drag this right here, and I feel like this is kind of long, okay? So what I'll do is, if I turn on warping, okay, and I turn on maybe texture or something, because this is a kind of a textured sound, if I hold shift, I can click this way and shorten this audio up a little bit. Now I have just for right there. So I have all these other Now maybe I'll just copy one of these and paste it here. Now I have Now I can copy all of this and just duplicate it throughout the song. And there we go. But like I was saying before, Audio is great for one-time occurrences. So maybe there's this one time where this sample hits that I want it to be five steps down. So this one sounds like that. But let's say we go, come over here and now we get. That only happens one time in my entire tune now, okay? And look how fast that was, all right? Now, another advantage, which is just something just to talk about, is that none of this is taking much processing at all. You know, this warping might take a little bit, but for the most part, I'm streaming these samples directly off of my hard drive. And if I have a solid state drive, especially, you know, this is really fast. Your, your computer is not sitting there thinking about this or using uh, computational power. It's not using your CPU. It's just busting out audio from your hard drive, right? Which is really, really fast. So another thing that I wanna talk about is that this is gonna sound like this. There's no effects in this channel, right? This is just, this is what it is, right? So in, in this case, another thing that you can think about is that I'm deciding to commit to this. I've committed to this audio. I've changed this audio, and this is how I want it. This is how it's always going to be. So in some ways, this is kind of saving me time because I'm not able to go back in here and second guess how my drum parts go. I'm not able to go in here and there's a thousand parameters that I could change. I, I, there's no second guessing. This is finished, right? I can move on to the next thing. So that's another way that using audio can help you because you can just commit to stuff, right? So I'm gonna drag another sample into here, and let's take a look at this. Now this sample is, sounds kind of nice. It's got a nice little end to it. I've made some fades. What I wanna talk about though is that you can add warping to each sample and change the algorithm that has to do with its warping per sample, okay? For each one of your audio samples that are sitting here. So if I choose texture, for example, and I wanna make this really long. I'll hold shift, drag this out. I'll change my fades back a little bit. And now I've got... <laughs> That's pretty wild. Maybe I'll drag it back just a little bit. Turn off flux, turn the grain size up. Maybe turn it down. 
Okay, so now if I duplicate this and I go to another snare hit, now the thing is is that I can change the grain size here and maybe even the, the transposition a little bit and I'm gonna get two incredibly different sounds. Right, both of these sounds are now totally different and I'm already done. You know, there's no parameter to mess around with. It's already finished, right? So Ableton's ability to manipulate audio and just hold shift and drag it out and you know, you can change everything about the sample in, in any way, shape, or form using Elastic Audio really uh, enables you to accomplish a lot that you might not be able to accomplish, um, at least in the speed that you would be able to using audio, right? So there are definitely advantages to using audio and definitely advantages to using MIDI. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's completely immaterial which one you use. It's more that you can get to goals faster using certain things. Like, so MIDI, for, for me, as a songwriter and as somebody that can, I have a decent ability with, you know, playing drums with my fingers, I can get those ideas out quickly. And then I'll kind of mess with some parameters. Then I'll usually freeze the tracks or something and flatten them, ext extract the chains. And some tracks, they remain MIDI the whole song. Like, by the end of the song, it's still MIDI. And other tracks end up becoming audio, and I'm manipulating certain samples here and there. It, it's, it's, I believe that a hybridized approach is probably a really good idea. It'll probably help you out in the future. So what I'd like to see is if you feel like I've missed anything in terms of these, these tips for using MIDI or for using audio, uh, leave them in the comments. Um, if you enjoy this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.